Hello everyone, my name is Rajneesh and I work with Centre for Science and Environment in Buildings and Sustainable Habitat program. With me is Dr. Anand Sharma and he is a former uh, ADG from uh, IMD. Currently we have these extreme weather events yes. which are impacting our buildings, our way our cities are developing as well as you can say the food, the agriculture and other aspects. So how we have now much more better informations and systems as compared to what we used to have in the past. Earlier our network of observation was uh, synoptic scale. Okay. And this I am talking about maybe 20, sure. 30 years ago. Synoptic scale means you have every 250 kilometers you have an observatory. But then you mesoscale your thunderstorms which forms over a very small area small from areas. tens to hundreds of kilometers. So they, have, they were not being captured. So then we started having every 50 or 100 kilometers one observatory and some of the cities like Delhi we already have about something like 20 automatic visit stations. Right. But then we need more granular data because now we are saying talking about urban heat island impact where buildings are also contributing, global warming is also contributing. Right. And then in between because of local variations in the construction where land surface changes has taken place, greenery is less or somewhere concrete is more. Where concrete is more, definitely you will have sure. a, a sort of intra-urban heat island in the, within the right, city. Right. So how do you capture that? For that you need almost every kilometer or so you need an observatory. And once you have this granular data, that granular will, data will go into developing better mesoscale models. So that will only happen once you have a more granular data, that means every one kilometer at least you have that. And who knows, in, in coming years, like the sensors are improving in the, our mobiles. So we will be having sensors and each and every one, wherever you are there, the, your data will be going ultimately to a central server and that data will be so granular that they will give you location specific forecast of nimbly at this area or no. Biggest carrier of or, or the one which can take away the heat is wind as well as you can say to great extent is the radiation with the sky becomes the uh, universal absorber of the heat in that case. So where are the factors which are now not letting that to happen? See earlier what was happening as you know, heat, urban heat island effect and if you go to outskirts where land surface is totally different. Right. Basic change has taken place is your land surface and their properties. Outside sure. if you go to outskirt what you have is grasses, crops, trees. Right. And continuously evapotranspiration transpiration is taking place and you have cooling comparatively lower temperature. But in the cities you have concrete buildings, you have asphalt on the pavements, road, everything, steel, iron, everywhere. So all these structures, I mean, have the, uh, this thing. Heat uh, absorbing. Heat absorb. They absorb heat and once the sun sets, after that they start slowly releasing that. So that is leading to rising temperature in the cities and not only daytime, even night is becoming, uh, I mean, minimum temperatures are also right. rising. RH, relative humidity is increasing, especially if the cloudiness is more at the night. So it will not let the radiation go out and the minimum temperature will further rise, making it life more uncomfortable. Uncom okay, now, Another issue is that your building design and tall building, you know everywhere right. we are, there's a trend that you have 40, 50 story building coming up and with glass, mainly it is glass, glass. and then you have narrow street. So under those conditions, what have we say, you know, you have urban canyons forming right. where wind speed is almost very less. So one side you have high temperatures and even humidity also, it's not easy sure. and on top of that you also have environmental conditions which favor accumulation of pollutants. Right. So this together is affecting the lives in the cities. And glass buildings especially, what happens you must have observed when you park your car in summer and you open it suddenly you find that it's like an oven. Right. So it is called greenhouse effect basically. So same thing is happening of these buildings, the, once the short wave radiation from the sun enters, it interacts with, it becomes long wave. Long wave cannot come out of the glass. Air conditioner displays heats. So is there is there something which could be done in this? We don't have any heat discharge standards at this moment. We make bad buildings and then we have bad air conditioning also. Yes. And then uh, both of these adds more waste heat which is there resonating now into the environment. So what is an advice which you want to give in this? So now question is that we need to change the behavior. But if you want to have use AC, you should use it for a short period of time. Right. So don't use very low temperatures and don't use continuously for 24 hours. Earlier all buildings used to have ventilators. Yeah, right. And why ventilator was there? Because cool air used to come from the window and after like you do respiration, hot air comes out, you 
cook something hot air warm air is lighter so it used to rise up right. and through the ventilator is to go out to go so that air circulation was maintained and lot of greenery was outside so it was acting as a natural ac right. microclimate was cooler but now in the houses you don't have any ventilation your buildings your walls used to be this thick now it is single brick buildings roof used to be very high that roof is has, has reduced so it's a wrong building design which is adding to it glass building should be in the temperate countries where temperatures are very low sunlight enters and heats heats up the right. building not for the tropical countries but because of now tall buildings coming those strong winds are not there dust is not there and dust as again nature has a balancing thing when you have lots of dust in the atmosphere it cuts the solar radiation it reduces the temperature so nature has certain mechanisms natural this thing those also contribute our behavior contributes our lifestyle contributes so all these it's a mix which affects thank you dr anand sharma for joining us and uh, thank you to our audience